The NBA season officially starts today, and for a single game not even being played yet, we have a lot to get into. From Derrick Rose's retirement, the Carl Anthony Towns, Julius Randle trade, NBA Media Day, and also going over all the Eastern Conference teams and ranking them, we have a lot to unload. So let's just jump right into it real quick with Derrick Rose's retirement. If you live underneath the rock, it's the only way you wouldn't know that Derrick Rose is retired by now. It's been everywhere, it's been talked about so much. But the main thing that I've been seeing people talk about is if Derrick Rose is gonna make it to the Hall of Fame or not. And the reason why this is such a big discussion is because Derrick Rose's prime was only like three to five years before injuries slowed down his career, uh, made his prime end a lot earlier than it should have. But I've seen a lot of people be split on this situation. A lot of people say that his prime or his uh, accolades aren't good enough. But also there's a lot of people that have been talking about how good Derrick Rose when his prime was. And so I think it's important that we have a quick discussion about that and also get what your guys' opinion on it as well. Um, in my opinion, Derrick Rose 100% is going to the Hall of Fame. There's that app that gives like a percentage of what the odds are that a player makes it to the Hall of Fame. And with Derrick Rose, they were given a 10% chance. But in my opinion, it's much higher than that. And the reason why is, I'm going to read off a couple of his stats real quick. Um, he's only a three-time All-Star, one-time All-NBA, an MVP, and a Rookie of the Year winner. When you look at that, everything but the MVP doesn't really scream like, Hall of Famer, it screams like a really good player, like a player that had a couple years where he was an all-star level player and then probably went down. Just because he's fresh in my mind, it kind of makes me think of like a Julius Randle type player or someone along that caliber. But the MVP really throws it off because every uh, person that's ever won the MVP award in the NBA has made it to the Hall of Fame. And because of that, I think Derrick Rose is gonna make it to the, uh, make it to the Hall of Fame. But when I think of Derrick Rose, a few things come to my mind. Obviously, there's a couple games I'm going to talk about. But I remember my first pair of basketball shoes that I ever had that were like a name brand player exclusive shoe were some Derrick Roses. I couldn't honestly tell you the name, but they were um, zebra striped silver and gray. And I thought they were the coolest shoes ever. And that is the only time I've really ever thought Adidas was that cool of a brand. I mean, they've got some cool stuff, but I've always picked like Nike or other brands over Adidas. But Derrick Rose honestly made him so cool. I had the D Rose shoes. I had D Rose, the same knee pads that Derrick Rose wore when he played. And so I think it's just cool that someone like Derrick Rose or Curry can make these brands that usually wouldn't get as much attention, make them cool and make people want to wear them. But also when I think of Derrick Rose, there's three games that come to my mind. Obviously, there's the 50-point game when he was on the Timberwolves against the Jazz. I remember watching that one live since I'm a really big Jazz fan. And it was cool to see, but it was also hard to watch as he's totally torching your team. The other one I'm thinking about is when he hit the game winner against the Cavs. With, he had 30 points, 7 rebounds, and 7 assists. Um, that one was cool, too, because I think that one happened after a lot of his injuries. And it was kind of like I'm a a moment where it's like I'm back and he was playing at that high level again. And then the last one I'm thinking of is his first ever playoff game. He was literally 20 years old. He was a rookie. His team, his Bulls team was 41 and 41 and they were facing off against the reigning champs, the Boston Celtics, and they had 60 they had 62 wins that year. And Derrick Rose was going at Rondo and the Celtics all night. He was hitting mid-range shot after mid-range shot, tough layup after tough layup. And he ended the game with one of the craziest stat lines I've ever seen. The game went to overtime. And he didn't score any points in overtime. But to end regulation, he had 36 points as a rookie in his first ever playoff game. But he ended also ended with four rebounds and 11 assists. And he led his team to a win in overtime. And it's not very often you see the reigning champs, the best team in the Eastern Conference, double teaming a rookie of, a, I think it was a seven or eight seed team. So that's kind of a cool memory and kind of a cool thing that not a lot of people talk about is how good his first ever playoff game is. But now moving on to the trade for um, the Julius Randle and Carl Anthony Towns trade. I kind of want to just go over this real quick. A lot of people have talked about it, but I just want to give each team a grade and kind of my thoughts on it. For the Knicks, I'm, I've kind of been going back and forth if I want to give them like a B plus or an A minus. 
Um, and the reason why is because I gave it so high is because the Knicks have been really struggling, like knowing who their center was going to be. They didn't have someone that is healthy that they knew was going to be there. And so being able to build a trade, a player that you didn't even have in your last playoff run for one of the best bigs in the entire league is pretty, pretty impressive to be able to pull it off for what they gave up. Um, it is sad losing a player like Julius Randle, who they've had on their team literally since they were not a good team. Like He was the only hope they had for a long time, so it is sad to see him go. But also I'm ecstatic for this team because on paper, they look like they might be maybe even the best team in the Eastern Conference on paper. I'm not going to give them quite that title until we see them play with how good the Celtics are. But it is cool that they're out here pushing for that. The last time I've seen a Knicks team that actually was – somewhat seemed like they were trying to go for it was when Carl, uh, Carmelo Anthony was traded to the Knicks. Even though that team really didn't do much, it was the last time it's been this exciting for the Knicks and they keep building on last season and have the best off season in the entire NBA. So I think I'm going to give an A- minus for this grade. It is kind of a hard situation since they got traded so late, but that's the grade I'm going to give them. The Wolves, I've seen a lot of people give them a pretty bad grade for this trade. But I saw my first look at Julius Randle in a Timberwolves jersey today. Saw him practicing with the team. And after I saw that, it made my grade go up. I gave them a B. I think they, uh, Carl Anthony Towns is a better player. But also, Julius Randle, I think he's going to be able to buy in with this team. In one of his interviews, he said, I feel happy to feel wanted. I couldn't imagine how hard that'd be, the media constantly attacking you for weeks and weeks and weeks after your team went and had this great run. And you're thinking they're going to come back and help the team build on that next year. But rather, instead, they're talking about how you're not needed, how they could trade you for someone else. And now that he's finally been traded, he doesn't have to worry about that anymore. And I think it's just a good move for him. And I think we're going to get another season of Julius Randle making All-NBA and helping the Timberwolves compete for a championship. We'll see how quickly they adjust when Gobert was traded to the Timberwolves. It did take a season. I'm hoping it doesn't take that long for this Timberwolves team. But I'm excited for this team. I'm excited to see how Julius Randle does. And honestly, I hope so it works out for both teams because I just want to see both the Eastern Conference and the Western Conference be competitive and be able to have multiple teams competing for a championship rather than just knowing that the Boston Celtics are going to make it to the NBA Finals. But then heard just a quick cover on Media Day. I'm just going to talk about some of my favorite things from it. It was honestly really cool to see Braun and Bronny at NBA Media Day, first of her father-son duo. And you could just tell the excitement in the room. That's honestly the, one of the main things I got from the Lakers media day. I don't remember any other interviews or anything, but it was cool to see them interact and uh, to see how happy Braun was to literally be there with his son and be able to have his family there. And um, I'm sure that was really special for Bronny too. Next thing was Jimmy Butler showed up with normal hair. I think this was really disappointing for everyone on the internet because it's been fun to see him with these crazy hairs and not taking media day serious. But with him going into um, his last season on his contract and also his team not performing as well as they wanted to the last couple seasons in the regular season, I think this is a good sign that he's coming in and he's going to be taking this season serious. And I think Pat Riley has a lot of help with that, with him taking it serious. But I'm excited to see if the Heat come out and are serious during the regular season to see how that goes. The next thing I want to talk about uh, I don't know if this is necessarily media day. Um, actually, I think it was because the, the Nuggets had a little earlier because they're playing in a different country. But Jokic is no longer tying his wedding ring to his shoe anymore because his new signature shoe has a little pouch specially made to hold it, which I thought was cool. And the reason why they did that was because he's lost two wedding rings. So he's trying to change that up so he doesn't have to worry about that anymore. Next thing was J.J. Redick said he figured out why Anthony Davis's shot has been off. He won't tell what they're doing to fix it, but he said he'll tell everyone when it's fixed, if it works, that they're going uh, what they did and what the problem was. But A.D., if you remember back in the 2020 playoffs in the bubble, Anthony Davis was arguably like as good of a shooter as like Carl Anthony Towns, it felt like. Maybe not as good from three, but his mid-range was falling like crazy and was a big reason why the Lakers were able to win the championship. But if he's able to get back to that, it'll bump the level of the Lakers up and he maybe potentially could finally, after years and years of people saying this, take over the reins as the best player in the Lakers. The next thing was, I don't know if you guys saw that clip of Scoot 
If you haven't, it's basically in his interview, he was asked what he took from his rookie season, what he learned from it, and he was absolutely cooked. His response was something along the lines of uh, the food was what he took away from his rookie year and all the good food he had. So that was interesting. I don't know what that means, if there's going to be anything they do about it or why he came to media day that way, but it was kind of funny and made for a really funny clip. And the only thing I really got from the, uh, the Trailblazers media day. And the last one was Kawhi Leonard. He was asked basically, how is it going to be different or harder without Paul George there? I'm just going to read this clip and just picture Kawhi Leonard saying this in the most robotic and uh, serious voice ever. He says, I don't think it'll be hard for me personally. I don't look at anyone to be my savior on the court. You know, Paul George and Kawhi were on the same team for a long time. It seemed like they had a pretty good relationship, but Kawhi is just one of those guys that I think just wants to go out there and hoop. Uh, he doesn't care who he's hooping with. And he just wants to go out there and play basketball. But it's also funny to say that when obviously his job's about to get a lot harder and his team's not half as good. But I'm hoping we can just get a healthy year from Kawhi and we're able to see him on the court and not have to worry about him being injured all the time. I don't know how long he's out for. There, Someone from the Clippers organization was asked how long he's going to be out. And he basically said, I don't have a magic ball. I can't tell you how long he's going to be out. But I'm hoping it's not too long. It seemed like he was going to play for Team USA and then wasn't. So hopefully it's not as bad as it sounds. But that's kind of the things that I took away from NBA Media Day. And then I we're just going to hurry and rank um, all the teams in the Eastern Conference into tiers. So I'm just going to hurry and record this on my screen real quick. Let me just get it loading. So we got all the teams right here pulled up. We got all the tiers. Um, we're going to be ranking all the teams based on the tier that I think they are. S, I'm only gonna put one team in the S for the Eastern Conference. It's the reigning Boston Celtics. Let's see if I can drag it. Why is this not working? There we go. We're gonna bring them up to S tier. They're the only team I'm gonna put in S tier. When I was making this video, there was one other team I had in mind, but the Boston Celtics are the only team in the S tier, reigning champs, Look like they could go back to back. I think that every year about most teams that win the championship, but the Boston Celtics have such a deep and good team. They didn't even have Perzingas for most of the playoffs and they were still able to win a championship. And I think it's something they can replicate over and over again. We've seen them in the conference finals multiple times. This is their second time in the finals. There's not really much to say about the Celtics because they're just a good team. And I think everyone expects them to be in the S tier for this. There's two teams I have in the A tier. Um, I feel like they're both proven teams. One of these teams was not proven last year or the last two years because they've lost pretty early in the playoffs, but it's been because of injuries. The team I'm talking about is the Milwaukee Bucks. We've seen them go out in the first round the last two seasons, and I think Giannis has got a chip on his shoulder. Him and Damian Lillard are going to have better chemistry this year. And I think we're going to see a deep run from them. As long as Giannis and Dame can stay healthy, this team has a chance to make a really deep run. And they've also got a lot of good pieces around them um, with Lopez and also Chris Middleton. But the other team I have is the New York Knicks. Even before this trade, I had them in the A. Um, on paper, I think they match up as well as... The Celtics do, but the Celtics are proven. They've done it before. We know what we're going to get from them. We don't necessarily know what we're getting from the Knicks. So for right now, they're at the A. If any three of these teams won the championship, it would not surprise me. Any of the teams below, I'd be a little surprised. Anything in B, uh, B tier, I'd be surprised. But also, they're really good teams that are going to be competing for a long time. The next one I have is the Philadelphia 76ers. Let's put them in the B tier real quick. I was debating putting them in the A tier, but with them getting Paul George makes their team better, Tyrese Maxey having a breakout, and then Joel Embiid, uh, if he can have a healthy season, this team is bound to be one of the best teams in the NBA. But it's just we've never seen a deep run from this team since Jimmy Butler was on the team with Ben Simmons. And it's just like we don't know what we're going to get. It's an unproven team. With this Knicks team, 
they're also an unproven team, but all the key players that were there the year before have come back and they've improved their roster. And I don't know. I can see the Sixers season going one of two ways, them becoming one of the best teams in the entire league or them staying exactly where they have been for the last couple of years. So that's why I have them there. We're going to speed run through the rest of these real quick. Um, another team that I have on B tier are two teams that I really love. We have the Orlando Magic and the Indiana Pacers. Let's just throw them up there real quick. Both these teams, I feel like they're pretty similar on their projections of where they're going. They're two really young teams that are really good. The Pacers obviously um, made it a lot further in the playoffs than the Magic did, but I feel like they're on equal playing field. I don't know if the Pacers will be able to replicate that, but also I think if the Magic went on a similar run this year, I wouldn't be surprised either. They both have young stars that are really good with Halliburton and uh, Paulo Bancaro. And I just think that they're two teams that people are underestimating how good they are and people need to keep an eye out for. And the, they're also really fun teams to watch. The Magic aren't as good offensively, but they're really fun teams to watch. Uh, in the C tier, I only have two teams in there. And they're two teams that I feel like could be on the B tier. But I have the Cavs. We just don't know what we're getting from, Ju uh, from not Julius Randle, wow. What we're getting from Darius Garland. Last year he was hurt, and they were still a pretty good team. They were right above the Magic, but I just don't feel like they've improved. The only way I see them getting higher is if Darius Garland gets back to where he was, and also if Evan Mobley makes a big jump. I love players like Jared Allen and Donovan Mitchell leading the way, but I just don't feel like... They have the ability to make the next jump. They're missing one piece, and I think they're going to have to make some trades or some moves in order to get that. Another team I have on this tier is the Heat. Last year it was a little bit of a disappointing season, but I don't think they're nearly as good as the Cavs. But I'm excited to see what it's like Jimmy Butler going into a contract year. He wants his money. I'm a big fan of BAM, and I think we're going to see a lot better heat team than we have the last two years in the regular season but i don't necessarily think they're going anywhere in the playoffs i don't think they're making another finals run or eastern conference appearance but they're a team that i'm like it could go one way or another on how this regular season goes i wouldn't be surprised if they were the five seed i couldn't i wouldn't be surprised if they were a play-in team again but moving on to the d tier these are teams that i feel like could be in the play-in we have the hawks and we also have the raptors these two teams are in two different stages. The Hawks are trying to be competent. They're trying to compete. They have Trey Young. They got the first overall pick, but they have nothing really outside of that. I mean, they have good players like Capella and other role players, but they're missing some other key players that like the Cavs have or the Heat have to make them better. And then the Raptors on the other end, they traded away all of their key players that they've had for a long time with uh, Fred Van Vliet leaving and then also trading Pascal Siakam away. But they also got back really good players. Um, I know a lot of people aren't a big fan of R.J. Barrett, but I think he's going to have a really good season this year. We saw once he became part of the Raptors, his numbers jumped tremendously. And um, they also added like Kelly Olynyk and other players like that that can go around um, Scotty Barnes. So I don't think they're going to be making any playoff run or anything, but I think both these teams are going to be in the playoff range. Um, I don't see them being any higher than that, but they're two teams that I think will be fun to see how they move, how they work moving forward. And then for the E tier, we have two teams. Once we're down to here, honestly, oh, it looks like I didn't rank one team, but I'm going to put three teams down here. We have the Bulls, um, we have the Pistons, and we have the Nets. The Pistons this year, I think they're going to do a lot better. I didn't expect them to be that bad at all last year. I honestly thought they were going to make a pretty big jump last year. But after last season, um, I think they're going to have a fresh start, and I think they're going to be a lot better. They're going to be probably, I think the Hornets will be better than them, but they... They have a lot of 
young players that I feel like could develop. It just depends on who develops and how quickly they do it. The Bulls have just started a new rebuild, but they still have players like Zach Levine. They have Vooch. So they're not quite on this F tier, but they're also not a team that you should be on the lookout for, that they could make the play in, but I think they'll be one of those teams that just barely misses it. And then the Hornets, they've got Brandon Miller. They've got LaMelo Ball coming back, hopefully. And they got a new coach. And I think things are going to be ran a lot better around there. And I think they're going to be a fun team to watch out for as well. Um, I could honestly see them making the play in. They could be in the same tier as the Hawks or Raptors. But I have them under the E. I think they're slightly below. But I think I'm actually going to move them up to the D tier. I think they're about that same level. And then the two bottom teams, we have the Wizards and uh, the Nets. I don't think this is a surprise to anyone. Both these teams have bottomed out. They're looking to rebuild. They're both have been one of the lowest teams in the Eastern Conference already. And then the Nets traded away players in order to bottom out even more. So I think these are the two teams we're going to be looking to be in the running for the first overall pick this upcoming season. Um, but I think both teams have players that are going to be fun to watch. You know, Jordan Poole, Kyle Kuzma, they're fun players to watch, but they're players that are fun to watch like highlights rather than watching a full game. So I don't think they're going to be a team I'm going to be watching a whole lot. I'm going to be tuning in to like watch Cam Thomas and different things like that. But these two are the lowest, two lowest teams in the Eastern Conference in my opinion. But let me know what you guys think. Do you guys think that this tier list that I made was pretty good? Do you think, what would you change? And do you think this is how this is going to be when the season ends? Or do you think some of these teams are going to jump around? But yeah, we got some NBA basketball on tonight. We'll be back in the next few days to talk about how that goes. And yeah, let's just enjoy some a new NBA season. And I'll catch you guys later. Peace.